Welcome to the Texas Chainsaw Family Guide. I'll be going over generic objectives and also each individual family member. Of course, keep in mind all of this knowledge comes from the tech test, which was available only for a limited time. It didn't have all the content that will be in the full release, such as perks, certain family members along with victims, and things are subject to change. Gun have given us a vague idea of what they intend on changing, and I will be keeping that in mind when going over this guide. This video will help with just not going into the game completely blind on release. If the guide proves helpful at all, please consider liking and subscribing for future Texas content. Thank you. First things first, victims have four ways of escaping. A main pathway powered by a generator, a rear exit powered by a car battery, pressure gate that is powered by, well, a pressure valve, and a basement exit that requires a fuse. It's important to note that the main generator and battery start the match turned off. So please, for the love of everything that is holy, if you are the family member that spawns outside, in the tech test this was always Hitchhiker, but obviously it's possible for the Hitchhiker to not even be in a match. So whatever family member spawns outside, turn on the generator and battery. If the main generator isn't powered, it's very easy for a victim to simply do something like jumping out the main window on the family house map and making a mad dash for the escape as soon as possible. It's important to identify where the key objective items are, such as the fuse and pressure wheel. As family, you can patrol these items, and if one happens to be missing, it'll give you a good idea of what escape the victims may be planning. Be sure to communicate this to your team. Communication is a huge deal in this game for lots of reasons. For one, you can't patrol everything by yourself. Family members can let the team know what to look out for. For example, if the hitchhiker's trap goes off by the fuse but he's currently chasing someone, hitchhiker can make a call out to go check on the fuse box and this one call out could be the difference between losing and winning. It's also good to communicate since every family member when chasing a victim cannot chase them through everything. Leatherface can't go through cracks, but Hitchhiker can. Nobody can go over pallets, but Leatherface can destroy them. So if a victim is being cheeky in a place they can't be touched, call for a teammate to help out, either to cut the victim off on the other side of breaking a pallet or to be on the other side of a crack. It's just incredibly important to have good communication. Of course, if you plan on solo queuing, you have no idea what kind of teammates you're going to get. Some might communicate a bit, some might not at all. If you're the type to be shy of communicating with strangers, I feel your pain. If you're on PC, you can type quick callouts in the text chat. I won quite a few games just because of a few text callouts. I'm sure texting can be done on console, but unless you have a keyboard hooked up, you can forget about that on console. Let's quickly break down every possible victim exit in more detail before going into each individual family member in depth. The simplest being the main gate. Once again, it's just powered by a generator. A victim simply has to kick the gen off and they are free to escape. It's important to note as a family member after a period of time, you can turn it back on again. However, it took quite a bit of time before this option would become available. For the rear exit, the victims have to turn the battery off and then go for a lock on the gate. Then they're free to pass through that one. Now our first escape that's a little more complicated, we have the basement exit. First, the victims have to find the fuse for the fuse box. The fuse has a few random spots it can spawn along with the actual fuse box itself. Make sure to memorize them to make searching for them a lot easier. They seem to have three spots each. This could be different on certain maps. Once the fuse is in the fuse box, a little puzzle has to be done to open up the basement exit for a period of time. The basement exit spawns in the exact same spot every time, but there's really only one killer that has high enough DPS to possibly defend the basement gate if it is opened. That killer being Leatherface, we'll get into him more later. The basement opens for only a brief period of time, so victims have to be fast. But after the brief amount of time with the tech test, there were some pretty easy paths that went straight for the basement. As family members, it will be important to know these paths and to guard them to dish out as much damage as possible. After the basement exit closes, it is possible for victims to simply open it back up. If a hitchhiker is on the team, he can trap the fuse box to make future reopenings of the basement a little harder to achieve. Sissy can also trap items with her poison, but it's difficult to say how good of a preventative it will be. The last exit we have is the pressure gate. It acts very similarly to the basement exit, but the exit spawns above the basement level. The victims have to find the pressure wheel and then attach it to this air pressure thing. They have to take some time to turn it on and then we get a fairly interesting mechanic. 
pressure will begin building and the gate won't open until enough pressure is built up. A steam sound can be heard when victims start the process from several points on the map. As a family member, you can actually stop the gate from opening. You have to find the pressure tanks and turn the wheel. The victim can turn it on again, but buying as much time as possible is of course a great thing as family. Once the pressure is all the way up, the gate will open momentarily, just like the basement exit, and just like the basement exit, the pressure gate can be opened multiple times. All DPS helps, but just like with the basement exit, Leatherface is the best bet at stopping victims from getting through. Now, as for universal mechanics that family members share, the first we'll cover is the stamina bar. Running and attacking uses up stamina. If a family member stops sprinting and attacking, they'll gain stamina back. If a family member is to attack and the attack causes the member to lose stamina, they'll do this silly little upset animation and get all their stamina back. The next thing isn't quite universal, but all the family members have to deal with it, this being what victims can use against family members and chase. This includes crawl spaces, tight corridors, doors, and pallet looking things. I'm not entirely sure what the proper term for these are. Each family member interacts differently with these. For instance, a checker can crawl through them just like victims can, while the cook puts down the metal shutter and Leatherface just deletes these crawl spaces from existence. Closing the metal shutter is the only option that isn't worth it if you are solo chasing someone. If the cook closes the metal shutter, victims can reopen it in an instant if they don't care about noise. However, if you are chasing a victim with another family member's help, having cook on the other side and continuously close the shutter, the victim can't use the crawl space. Tight corridors in the technical test was easily the most powerful tool a victim had in chase. They had tons of invincible frames and cannot be destroyed in any way. It has been stated that these tight corridors are going to be looked into a bit more, but for the purpose of this guide, I'll be acting as if they will be like this when the game fully launches. Just know that there will be some changes to them. If you are solo chasing a victim with either Leatherface or the Cook, Around one of the tight corridors, if the distance is too large and the victim has two brain cells, give up. If none of your teammates are nearby, it's a waste of time. Hitchhiker has two answers to the tight corridor. The first is to simply just follow them through it, which, quick note, victims would try and heal immediately after crossing a tight corridor. If Hitchhiker swipes his blade immediately after going through the tight corridor, he will interrupt the healing process. The other answer a hitchhiker has to tight corridors are his traps, simply placing a trap on one side of the corridor and now if the victim decides to cross, they will be punished for it. Of course, if you aren't playing hitchhiker, the best answer is to just have two family members at both ends, but this can't always be done. The next thing victims can use are all these pallet looking things. Leatherface is the only character that can destroy these, but if Leatherface can't be used at the moment, there are a few things that can be done. Just like with tight corridors, if the family members are at both sides of it, the victim crossing the pallet can be punished. The invincible frames after they cross the pallet is a little finicky and requires a lot of practice. I still didn't quite get it after, but you can definitely punish a victim that is just going across it. And if you have family members across both sides of the pallet. Hitchhiker can still use his traps, but that's about it. The Leatherface needs to destroy these as fast as possible. Doors can be used against family members as well. If a family member gets a door slammed on them, they'll tumble over for a bit. Family members can use this against other family members as well if you want to be a little troll. Some doors have latches that can be set up prematurely so the victims can't instantly go for it so family members can get a few more hits in and possibly a death with it. Leatherface can also destroy doors, getting rid of the problem completely. Victims can also go through wells placed on the map. These wells secure immediate safety for the victims, but it will damage them and send them right back to Leatherface's basement. It will be important to memorize the drop points of these wells to cut victims off and finish the job. The very last thing that victims can use are bone shards. Victims can either sneak attack family members with these, stunning them and also initiate a struggle which initiates a mashing minigame. If the family member wins, they instantly kill the victim. If the victim wins, they get a stun. It seems the more damage the victim is in, the harder it is for the victim to win this exchange. If another family member is nearby, they can hit the victim which seems to instantly kill the victim. Not sure if this is always the case. The last universal mechanic is Grandpa. Grandpa needs blood, which can be gathered from either hurting or killing victims. And the other option is to gather blood from buckets placed around the map. Once Grandpa is fed enough blood to achieve at least his first level up, he will let out a battle cry. Any victim moving during this battle cry will be shown to the family members. 
Grandpa has five levels. With each level, he becomes more powerful, screaming more frequently. And at level five, all victims will be shown no matter what. Very useful for finding one extremely immersive victim. Players found that Grandpa wasn't powerful enough when he wasn't at level five. So Gun has said they plan on buffing him in some way. Victims can stab Grandpa with a bone shard, lowering his level by one. But any victim that comes close to Grandpa will be shown to family members. Be sure to keep an eye on Grandpa to keep the information flowing. All right, that's all the objectives covered. Let's go over each individual family member available in the tech test and what they're good at. Let's start with the Hitchhiker. Hitchhiker is quick and agile, able to go through absolutely everything the victims can go through, except for pallets. He starts the match with three bone traps, and in the tech test, he was the family member that spawned outside, which is a great thing since he's the fastest family member of the three we had, meaning he could quickly dart to the generator and battery turning them on. Many people would trap the objectives, but I actually don't think it's a great idea at the start. I think it's better to trap the fuse box and the entrances leading to the objectives outside. One of the best things you can do as family is objective prevention, and if you're able to continuously reset your trap you can make it miserable for the victims to move on to the exit objectives. For example, if Hitchhiker has the rear door trapped along with the cook's padded lock and a standard lock, that is three different things victims have to get through. And if you're an observant Hitchhiker, you can continuously reset the trap, meaning they either have to bite the bullet and take the damage from the trap or keep grabbing bone shards, meaning they can only have one inventory slot for unlock tools. Now, if you have the trap at the far generator, sure, it takes a bit longer to kick the gen as a victim and you get an alert, but certain characters can bypass these things easily. And if some teamwork is involved, someone can simply take the trap while the other starts kicking the generator. By the time you actually get over to the generator, they can be long gone. Now, once you know the victims are outside of the main area, like the main slaughterhouse yard or the family house, then I think it's okay to trap these other objectives since you'll be patrolling the outside area more anyways. Now, as for why it's important to trap the fuse box, it is so incredibly easy, if not checked for a victim to snatch the fuse and do the fuse box unnoticed. There are no noise notifications like the pressure valve, and there are also times when the fuse box itself is behind cover, making it harder to see if someone is on it. So having the fuse box trapped is the most important trap for a hitchhiker to place, in my opinion. Now, to know if your trap went off, there are two main ways to know. If a trap is stepped in, Hitchhiker will make an audio cue telling the player someone stepped in the trap. If someone uses a bone shard to disarm the trap, there will be no audio telling the player the trap was dealt with. But the Hitchhiker can use the family focus ability, which every family member has, to take a look at his traps. The focus ability will show you which traps are still up and which aren't. It's always good to pop this for a few seconds and do a quick trap roll call just to be safe, and as Hitchhiker, if the player does get the auditory notification, it's good to pop it to see which trap exactly was set off by a victim and call it out to your teammates. Hitchhiker is also very good at collecting blood. He gets 18 for each bucket, which is just two less from the cook and can hold up to 90 blood. Grandpa only needs 100 blood in order to level up, meaning at max blood capacity, Hitchhiker gives nearly enough for a complete level up. Family members can gain blood for every hit on victims, killing a victim and the blood buckets found around the map. This blood can be fed to grandpa, which is a very important thing to keep on top of. Hitchhiker is also amazing at getting blood from victims, which is both a good and bad thing. Hitchhiker takes an eternity to kill a victim. His strikes do extremely little damage, but each strike will give Hitchhiker more blood. More on the positive side, Hitchhiker is good at keeping on victims tails since he can go through nearly everything a victim can other than pallets, of course. But if Hitchhiker has a trap ready, he can trap pallets, cutting off the option for victims. He was easily the best chaser in the tech test. Another good thing to know is that Hitchhiker can move his traps, so don't worry if you aren't sure about a trap. You can always move it afterwards if it ends up not working. On to the cook. Out of all three of the characters that we got in the tech test, Cook is the simplest. He is absolutely the support class family member. For his ability, he begins listening with his ear, move towards the biggest pointed squiggles, and you'll see the aura of victims. 
which you should absolutely share with your family members. He's also the best in the tech test at collecting blood, getting 20 blood per bucket and able to hold 100 blood total, meaning after five buckets, he can immediately level up grandpa. He'll nearly always almost have max blood after executing a victim as well. However, catching them with the cook is most certainly a challenge and shouldn't really ever be the cook's main goal. The cook mainly wants to prevent victims from escaping with information given to his teammates, but also prevents them from escaping with his padlocks. The cook has three padlocks that are given to him to place on any door of his desire. This will give another lock for victims to have to work through. Like Hitchhiker, he can also view his padlocks with the focus ability, meaning you don't have to go to the complete other side of the map to check on them. Also, like the Hitchhiker, I find it best to put the padlocks close to whatever main central structure is available on the map. The reasoning being the cook's incredibly slow movement speed. If the cook spends all of his time walking all the way to the rear exit to trap the gate, Grandpa will remain at level zero for a very long period of time, but it also means victims will have an easier time if they happen to get to the surface level quickly. Once victims start learning the game, they would climb out extremely quickly from the basement. I feel it's better to trap whatever the exit doors are and get to collecting blood as fast as possible. Learning where the buckets spawn as cook is very important. Blood comes back to the buckets over time, so cook will be patrolling these buckets quite frequently to level up grandpa. He mostly wants to be chasing victims off of objectives, collecting blood, and giving information to fellow family members. While the cook can dish out all right damage to victims, he has to catch them first. With his slow movement speed and not being able to follow victims through any nooks and crannies, he won't be killing victims super frequently. He'll mostly be killing them by having other family members lead victims to him. His stamina is also very pathetic, meaning he can't get too many hits off before he gets tired, unlike Hitchhiker and Leatherface who have stamina for days. I believe that's all there is to the cook, so let's move on to Leatherface. Leatherface, as one might expect, is pretty simple. He has a chainsaw that must be started up in order to do damage. You can turn the chainsaw off at any time to be a little sneaky, but you must start it back up in order to do anything with three quick little skill checks. I found it was better to just keep the chainsaw on. Perks will most likely be changing this factor because by the time the chainsaw started back up, the victim was already on the other side of the country. Once the chainsaw is actually turned on, you can rev the saw, which gives you access to a few things. For one, he gets more damage, very simple stuff. Once Leatherface revs the saw past nine o'clock, he'll go into a run. Now this leads to the most confusing part of the character that I definitely need to test more. Now it's rumored that if you get the chainsaw just right, it's a one shot kill, but the telltales for this one shot kill are up in the air if there even is one to begin with. When running, you get access to a much more powerful strike that immediately stalls your chainsaw. I tried messing with it throughout the entire tech test. I feel the only times it one shot anyone was when they had already taken damage or if they were a low health character like Connie. But there are actually maybe a sweet spot that will instantly kill a victim. More testing is needed. Other than the sweet spot, the run Leatherface gets at the 9 o'clock mark is very useful. It's much faster than his usual run, allowing Leatherface to make lots of distance. It has definitely been the difference between a victim getting out and not getting out in a few of my matches, absolutely. Leatherface can't squeeze through nukes and crannies like Hitchhiker, but he can completely destroy pallets, doors, and crawl spaces. He has a little thrust attack through cracks in the tech test. It was extremely bad. But Gun have said they're looking into it, so this ability might get a little stronger. Leatherface can kill a victim faster than any family member that was in the tech test, usually only taking about three to four strikes. He collects a very little amount of blood, so leave the blood collecting to the other family members, except for when in the basement, which is where Leatherface always spawns with every other victim. It feels like a labyrinth, but once you get a feeling for the layout, Leatherface can beeline it straight for the victim spawn, finding them quickly. When down there, Leatherface's goal is to just buy his fellow family members as much time as possible, scaring victims away from metal doors and possibly taking one out. The basement has lots of safe options to go for, making it pretty difficult for Leatherface to take anyone out, but you really just want to buy time. And once victims make their way upstairs and you head up with them, simply guard the objectives and help your fellow family members out by breaking pallets along with dealing DPS against victims, taking care of them for good. 
but I believe that is it for all the family members. I have, may have missed something, and of course, when the game fully comes out, there will be changes along with perks, additional characters. There will be a lot to take in, but hopefully this will help you get your footing. Please leave a like if this helps you at all, and thank you all for watching. Much more Texas Chainsaw to come. Subscribe to not miss out.